Hello guys, this is uh, the TI-84 guy. I'm back. Uh, I wanted to go over a couple of problems that I did from my last video. Um, I kind of rushed through the explanation of a couple of the problems and I think I might have been, uh, well I know I was confusing and I may have confused some of the, some people so I wanted to start by kind of redoing those problems and taking my time and trying to explain what I was um, thinking and also showing you how uh, I would actually use the program FatQuad to um, help me. Alright, so <clears throat> this was the problem that I was doing. This is a number 29 and what it's saying here is that it says the equation above defines a circle in the XY plane and it says what are the coordinates of the center. So if you look at the equation you got x squared plus 20x plus y squared plus 16y equals a negative 20. Now you should know or hopefully you should know that the um, basic standard um, equation form for the circle of equation is x minus a squared uh, or x minus a the quantity x minus a squared plus the quantity y minus b squared equals r squared and the center of the circle is going to be a b and the radius it's just going to be R. So um, this is this is the x coordinate of the center of the circle. This is the y coordinate of the center of the circle. This is and R is the radius. So we need to get uh, we want to find the coordinates of the center. So that means we need to get this equation into this form. Now, um, even though this is a circle, we can use the fat quad program to help us. And this is how I would do it. So all we're going to do. So we're going to turn it on. Uh, let's go here, and we're going to go to Fat Quad or Quad Fat. <laughs> I'm saying it backwards. It's Quad Fat. Um, and press Enter. Now, in this case, here's what we're doing. We're going to take the the x part. So it's going to be x squared plus 20x, and we're going to complete the square on this part. And then we're going to do the same thing for the y part. Y squared plus 16y. Uh, and once we completed the square, once we've done that, we're going to have the, uh, this is going to give it the vertex for this, and we can use those coordinates in order to find the answer. So let's just do that. So we're going to start by doing the, uh, finding the, the vertex for this part. So we would just um, choose the standard one, option one. And then we're going to go, um, x is, x, the leading coefficient is one. Um, the B term is 20. The C term, since there is no C term, we put in 0. And then we choose option 2, the vertex. We want to put it in vertex form. So the vertex form of this would be x plus 10 squared minus 100, right? Okay, so that means that the x, the, the x coordinate is going to be a negative 10. And now we're going to do the same thing for the y. So we just go back going to choose standard again. The coefficient of the y term is 1. Coefficient of the b term is 16. And the coefficient of the c or the constant is 0. Since there's nothing here, we choose 2 again. And we have this. So the vertex form would be x plus 8 squared minus 64. Okay? So that means that the the y, the um, the y coordinate of the vertex would be, or the y coordinate of the circle would be a negative 8. If you look, our answer would be b, okay? Now, let me go a little further with this. If we were trying to find the radius, okay, if we were trying to find the radius, what we would do is we would take this term here and add it to the right-hand side of the equation. So we're going to, or the opposite of this, right? Since this is a negative 100, in order to complete the square, um, and solve this, we would have to add 100 to this side. So we'd have 100 minus 20, which would be 80. And then we would also add 64 to this side. So that would be uh, 80 plus 64 is 144. So that means that uh, on the right-hand side of the equation, we would, we would have this. It would be 144. And, oh, I'm out of the... I'm out of the frame here. Let me let me bring this up a little bit. It would be it would be 144, and the right hand side of the equation would be x plus 10 squared plus 
uh, y plus 8 squared equals 144. And of course, the square root of 144 is 12. So in this case, the radius is, would be 12. Now, this question didn't ask for that. But the next question that I have actually does. And that's why I wanted to go ahead and get us prepared for that. All right. So now, this is a number 29 or 27 question. The last one was a 29 question. So it's a kind of average or medium difficulty. And if you're comfortable completing the square, they shouldn't be too difficult. But if you have this program, it'll be a, a piece of cake. Um, but so if you look at this one, we're going to do basically the same thing that we did in the previous problem. The only thing that's different is if you look at this problem, you'll see that the leading coefficients uh, for the x squared term and the y squared term is 2. If you're going to complete the square, everything, you should always, the leading coefficient should always be 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to divide everything by 2. And then we're going to complete the square like we did in the previous problem. Okay, so if we divide everything by 2 and the right hand side as well, we're going to have x squared minus 3x plus y squared plus y equals 45 over 2. Now in this case we're trying to find the radius so we're not only going to complete the square we're going to have to take the part that we the the squared part and we're going to have to add it to the right hand side and then take the square root of that to find the radius so let's do that. So what we're going to do is what we did in the previous problem we're going to focus on this part first complete the square so let me make sure that's in here okay let me move this up so we can see everything okay so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the program again standard form so the um, coefficient of the x squared part is 1 um, the b is a negative 3 of course uh, c is gonna be 0 and again we're gonna choose option 2 so it says that the com um, completed square would be 3 halves squared minus 9 over 4 all right, so that's that's the part that we're going to have to add to this side. Uh, now we're going to complete the square on the y on the y part y portion. Same thing, standard. It's going to be one. The b term is one as well. C term is zero. We're going to complete the square. Choose option two. So the completed square for the second part would be y plus one plus one half squared minus one-fourth equals 45 over 2. Now, so all we're going to do to finish this is we're going to we're going to take a negative nine-fourths and a negative one-fourths which would be a negative ten-fourths and we're going to add it to the right hand side. So what we're going to have is this three-halves squared three or three over two x minus three over two squared plus y plus one half squared equals 45 over 2 plus 10 over 4 because I took these two terms and added it to the right hand side now let's see what that is so uh, clear I'm going to use alpha y equals and then I'm going to say 45 divided by 2 plus alpha y equals again 10 over 4 and that tells me that this side here is going to be equal to 25. So our final equation is going to look something like, or our penultimate step is going to be this. Now we just take the square root of this, which is the square root of 25 is 5. So that means that r is 5. So that means our answer would be choice A. So even though this is a circle, right and they have a lot of these problems or they have at least one or two of these problems on the um, SAT you can still use the the quad fact program uh, even though it's not a quadratic to to help you solve this problem alright um, now I hope that's a lot um, clearer than um, what I did in the last video um, and I'll put the link to the other video at the end of this alright um, Let's see, I'm at nine, almost ten minutes. I'm going to go through, for those of you who may not have watched the first video, 
I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a few of these problems. Um, not all of them, but uh, a couple. Because I, I still want to make sure that everyone understands that this is a very powerful program. Uh, let's go. So again, I'm going to go program and I'm going to go to quad fact, press enter, uh, press enter again. Now, in this particular problem, it says x squared minus 11x plus 24. Uh, they want us to factor that. So this is pretty straightforward. So we're going to go from the standard form of the equation. So we're going to put in 1, a negative 11, plus 24. And we're going to go, we're going to go for option 3, or option 1, which is the factored form. So we want to factor it. If it's factorable, here are the factors. x minus 8, x minus 3. So the choice would be number B. I've already got it circled. I've kind of looked at these ahead of time. Um, okay, let's look at number 2 here. So here's the value to me. One of the things that's very valuable, the fact that this program will uh, complete the square or get it into vertex form, I think that's extremely uh, powerful. I haven't seen any program um, on YouTube that does that. I've seen a bunch of programs that will factor it for you, um, but I haven't seen any that will actually put it in vertex form. Um, or I actually haven't seen a program that actually does all three. Okay, so that's what makes this uh, valuable. Alright, so now in this case we have 9t squared plus 12t plus 4 and they want us to factor it. So we would go, we would choose option 1 because it's in standard form and we're going to put the leading coefficient is 9, the B term is 12, the C term is 4 and we want to factor it so we're going to choose option 1 and we factor it and we see that this is a perfect square so the answer would be A so it's 3T plus 2 squared the quantity alright let's see what's another one let's do number 3 okay so number 3 Again, what we got here, we have uh, a standard form of the quadratic and they want us to factor it. So let's do that. Uh, let me move this over and get this uh, all squared away. So we're going to press enter again. Um, we got the standard form, so the leading coefficient is 15. The B term is 74. The C term is a negative 32. Now, if you had to factor this um, longhand, this, is a, this would be a lot of work. Okay. Um, but since you have this program, you just pop the numbers in, press enter, and we want it factored, so it's option one. It's doing its thing, and it does it for us. It says that the factored form would be 3x plus 16, 5x minus 2, which is what we have. Um, since we're multiplying this, the commutative property holds. Uh, on this particular exam, they have 3x plus 16 first. I have it second. It doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter because uh, multiplication is commutative. All right, so the answer would be D. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to do? Okay, let's look at um, let's look at problem number six. Um, all right, so this is a quadratic that doesn't have a B term, but as as you hopefully you will notice this is a perfect square this is a perfect square we have a minus sign so this is the difference of perfect squares alright so um, program can handle that if there's no B term no problem just press enter so this is the standard form we're going to factor it so we put standard and we put in a 1 since the leading coefficient is 1 we put in a 0 for B since there's no B term and then we put in a negative 36 for C. Uh, we're going to factor it, so we choose option 1. And boom, it's done. X minus 6, uh, X plus 6. Or in this case, T minus 6 uh, and T plus 6. So the answer would be B. Um, is there another one that I want to do? Oh, here's a good one. Uh, number 7. Okay, so um, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Alright, so number seven. Uh, it says 12x squared minus 147. They want us to factor that completely. Um, so let's go here and let's do it. So standard form Um, is 12, leading coefficient is 12, no B term, so we put in 0, 
and then we have a negative 147 and then we want to factor it so choose option one and there we have it three um, 2x minus 7, 2x plus 7, so it would be this choice here. Um, let's see here. Now, um, do, I'm going to do a couple more problems then uh, kind of call it a night. Um, this one here, this is a good problem to look at. But instead of, instead of going from, instead of trying to go from the standardized to the factored form, Let's see, which one is the answer? Let me go see here. Number eight is B. So we're going to take the standard form or the factored form and put it in the standard form. So I'm going to go the other way just to show you that this, um, that the program can handle that as well. So let me get this all lined up here. Number eight is in the screen. Okay. So now, so this is the answer. So we're going to go we're going to go from the factored form to the standard form. So what I'm going to do, um, press enter. Uh, and now in this case, I'm going to choose option three since it's factored. So I'm going to choose option three. And then I'm going to put in the leading coefficient or the A term is eight. The, um, the next term is actually one since these are kind of backwards right um this should be like this z plus two and this one would be uh let's see this would be oh they tricked me a little bit here this is z z plus two or negative z plus two um, okay, so let me see if this handles it. I, um, so let's see here. So P would be 1. Um, the L, L, the L prompt would be 2. And then the D term is going to be a negative, or, or the O term is going to be a negative 1. And then the other one is going to be a 2 again. All right, so let's do that. And now we want the standardized version, so we choose option three. And it gives it to us. It says that the standardized form will be a negative 8x squared plus 32. So if you rewrite this, you may match up. So this shows you how flexible it is. Not only can you go from vertex to standard or standard to vertex, you can also go from standard to uh, factored or factored to standard. So that's what makes this um, program, Quad Fact, extremely flexible. Um, and if you'd like a copy of this um, to use on the SAT or the ACT or to do your homework, um, just um, subscribe to my channel, send me your email, and I will get you a copy of this as soon as possible. Um, I hope this has been helpful. And um, if you have any questions, put it in a comment, and I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. Thanks.